Greetings. This is General of the Armies, Vincent Diaz, Jr. This is a communique for Vladimir Putin. Attention to all world leaders. Emphasis on the King of Jordan and the surrounding kings. Over the last post, communique, CC all stakeholders. BCC, those I try to have join me in my way of life, I've explained in my special set of terms to try to create the education system based on the words used of the terms of said way of life. In this communique, I want to tell some stories I've gathered together. So I've managed to leave my old life, this life behind, to go to my old life. And I've also, with the help of the community, the enslaved, that were brought into this situation as slaves, um, been granted and, and taught the right to free myself of this language I don't even really speak or that isn't really spoken and return to my native language, my, my Latin. So a little housekeeping, um... I think we have this world water crisis under control with what I did to get out my um, recipe thanks to my water work experience like working at BP and Amico at the Whiting Refinery in Chicagoland and beyond. I think we're all right. I think things went well enough so that it can also be mimicked almost anywhere just using these food products and basic waste or um, recycling like products. I got to see from the zero hour video I saw the next video play where I got to see the haze go down. Like uh, we, we raised the haze I wanted and, and that I wanted to recirculate it and it brought down the haze in the zero hour video I saw where the haze just, just it was up and we didn't it didn't run the, the same way the next video I saw on the news I was watching after it was done and my, my, my communiques were through so I have um, some stories to weave together I have the, the last time my rank was honored and respected and I was appropriately the leader so I always am a leader who was followed properly by those directly around me in my presence. I'll get to that next. I think it was Canada, or the, the Great Northern Frontier or something. I, don't, I forget the terms. Alaska. Not exactly Russia. The North Pole, probably not. I have... Um, my story of being struck by the nuclear weapon, I don't know if I've gotten out fully. I've been working on it. The, the one major big strike, I think this is my, my story of having the wives. My, my wives. I'm still supposed to have, uh, I sort of have and don't because we have this tontine. With the final conditions, beyond outliving the other suitors, I totally beaten all competitions of the threat being over. I managed to get them into securement at our mill facilities or our bunker mills or whatever. Giving them up myself, having having been the one working them and living in them, and getting them to them. Before I was struck by the by the by the A bomb or or whatever the appropriate terms are. I'm basically gonna get I'm gonna cut try try to cut to this. Cut cut right to it. We were sort of having recess. And I, I recognize it was sort of a different facility over and over. We had these, these ultimate sort of difficult conditions. It was sort of like living in the Windy City. Anytime we were out there through this sequence of events where I count down to getting hit in the face with the, with the weapon at these facilities that were sort of the same facilities over and over, there's always this, this, this ultimate sort of high wind and huge wind vectors 
and a really special condition, like actually a blast shield, but like fog or haze or just just a fog of war, I might have called it. Not really being able to see out to the horizon or up to the sky most of the time. Go, going out there to just check conditions and, and try to try to try to learn and participate in sports. I being the best, perfect, always winning, totally invincible. And having this basic this basic legacy. <laughs> Sacrificing myself for the win, but not really because I was invincible. Where we were working on soccer, football, I was I was basically always the goalie because I could score from the goal. I was basically as big as the box we were using, and I would always win because I just get hit in the face if I had to, to, to stop, score. I remember in class. Just some talk about what the Olympics were. Like what a javelin really is, I had to teach them. Pulling the term from constellation terms, like Aries, and the, um, the archer and the bow and the quiver, uh, without, without being able to explain what an arrow was in constellation terms, but having a term loosely explaining what a javelin was in constellation terms, with it being needed, because archery wasn't really in the Olympics right then, but the javelin throw was. I, was talking, I had started talking about the javelin catch, so I was getting really tired, some sort of refereeing or officiating in events there's no place for it. So we were learning physics and math in basic Latin and Roman terms, universal terms. Discussing the big bombs. What it might be. But the way they wanted these Looney Tunes things, like a needle tip to needle pierce, the strike. So we started talking about a javelin system or javelin systems. And I, I figured whatever the bomb was going to be with the talk about the needle pierce we had discussed, it was going to be not a needle, but it was probably going to be javelin tipped. It's basically the only technology, and we were, we were there trying to teach each other like they were trying to teach me it was supposed to be some sort of sporting like type of warfare or weaponry working on football football soccer mostly with our sports time at, at recess with I not realizing it but we, we discussed that putting a football at the tip of a javelin would be the proof we already had the football would be protection the guy being the one taking the football to the face had to discuss these things about, I mean, could it go on the tip of a javelin and keep you safe? Talking about your javelin catches, thinking you're not so safe. You don't get it perfect, even with your invincibility. Until it was, it, was, it, was the, it was the day we were out there and the conditions were the harshest ever. I could barely hear anyone, like right in my face. We we're out there to play the soccer. One of our most pristine, intelligent females. You have to stop the goal. Our lives depend on it. We can't survive out here. I mean, I can barely hear. It's surely going to hit you in the face. There's no way it won't be a soccer ball that hits your face. How can I possibly not block this one if it's right at my face? I always have. And then there it was. When I knew, I, I, I knew, I, 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 was, I was told, it's, it's inbound. It was in sports. I'm looking around. Where, where's this thing coming from? Here it comes. I think I'm going to get my movements right. But it's like my hands are frozen or time is slowed. I can't move as fast as I can. Something I haven't really experienced to that point. I'm trying to get my hands up. Hands me right in the face. I'm trained right on the mouth. Trying to hail at me. This. This. That's right about the mark. It was a big one. Everybody had gotten the lockdown. 
this is the point at which I wasn't completely invincible anymore. I had felt stinging before. Like I'd been hit and sort of stung. I, I didn't really consider it anything proving I wasn't invincible. It was in no way damage. This one hit. It stung about normal. I thought things were about all right. With it having cleared, another another classmate or sports member was out there. He was saying something like, don't touch your face. I didn't know better. I touched it. Things seemed all right. I just, just goes, I was going to go through my you know like sting check and you know just take take the pain off. I didn't really even consider pain being invincible. And then another check. I was nearly hair lipped, bleeding. I don't know how long it was from there until I'm basically in a house trying to recover. So the last time in my life, I've been with a society that was a good society, but we were at the, 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 the hands, the feet of tyrannical evil. Um, it's hard for me to say the grade. I mean, it was, it was an education program, probably the K-12 through program. I'm still rough, roughed up. It's probably not where I was when I finally hit the program, having been fully created to even be run through a full K-12 through run. <laughs> With Sunday school and preschool, pre-K, all that capable of being gone through before getting to kindergarten. What I think, um, when I was finally at this final stage of getting through the full K through 12 education, I managed to get something like a Sesame Street kindergarten class. My look, my rough terms. So I think it was before this. I'm not sure. It might have been after that, like at that unit at that, at that school. I think it was first grade. It might have been second. It might have been third. We had a um, a whole unit of um, of our education of the year, like a third, maybe like a trimester, like we could go year round if it went so bad. Dedicated to an economy and an economy experiment. Experiment. So I'm almost sure, like getting hit in the face with the nuke was in Hiroshima or whatever. At this point, I think I was, I think I was in Canada or Alaska or something. And I think we didn't even have an economy based on currency at this point. With us having this need to have to go through this because people had basically no way to understand currency in economy terms. But we were all bright enough to understand the mathematics and basics behind currency units and our, our units like our dollars and our quarters and our dimes and nickels and pennies and such. So this was the last time I was, I was able to be the leader, respected as the leader, lead and be followed pro properly and perfectly by my peers and my peer group at least, with the teacher not even really being the teacher, all of us knowing it and working this over, trying to cope with it to get our education. But the, the teacher was leading the, this experiment where we all sort of got jobs, chores. Well, nobody, basically nobody was employed. It was sort of like Monopoly. It was sort of based on Monopoly. Like $200 like every week with, 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 the, with the, like the lesson or test for the week being um, paying the bills and, and, and such to get, and, and getting your next money with an economy of like buying candy. Basically all that was going on was buying candy. And doing our work. Around, around running our our, our, um, our our pay and payout and such. So, some jobs. Everybody was mad about this one. I especially because it was my job. Like I was going to have all the jobs. Everybody was alright with me having all the jobs. Before we started this and had to agree to it. Everybody's still having their right to the money. And basically it was all my work. There, they stripped from me so others could do it. Well, we got a hall monitor that sort of turned into our hall cop. Sort of turned into a cop, but it was all this experiment. None of this was allowed outside of our experiment terms. Totally corrupt and corrupted everything. The teacher didn't even know Monopoly or how to run the bank or be the bank as Monopoly. The basic terms being it's sort of like a game of Monopoly. And I, having stepped up, you know, having been this leader, and also being basically the only one who had access to currency, 
as well as the only one with, with a lifestyle of being out in society and even having any capability of spending currency. Basically, there was also this this um, rewards and wages based system. Things were locked up really hard. Like no matter what anybody did, starting out with their two hundred for the pay period, they could never have more than two hundred at any time. Basically, within the the way things were locked up, in which. You didn't stand a chance if you couldn't bring out an out bring in an outside resource you had to have real currency for and have a way to go get it in society. The teacher was moving blow pops. It was our best candy and food and gum. It kept us allowed in gum. It's the best thing we could have. I I I basically I basically was the reason we had had the blow pops. It's trying to make it the super ropes. Have the most for our money and make it the most food and the most fair for our our, our uh, monopoly money to represent real currency. So I tried to I, was, I, I brought out blow pops to make the point about what one's supposed to cost. There's a unit. I, I think we didn't have anything below a dollar, as monopoly usually goes, as, as units of exchange. Blow pops are in no way reasonable for that, but a super rope is. I, I promised everybody because the teacher had already had this problem about having candy in the class and rules but if, if you have candy you have to have enough for everybody every time you have candy the teacher would not do it and the teacher wasn't the teacher I promised everybody like I had already I, I can uphold our system of our rules every time there's candy we can make it so there's candy for everybody as I've always done and then I needed their agreement. I'm going to have to have all the money here. I mean, the teacher's going to have all the money, the way we're sort of saying, the way it'll go out to us, and then I'm going to have to have all the money. With there being this guarantee, I've never failed you. When all you basically want is your candy. Like our rules are, the teacher's never followed. So it's this next, next fight with the teacher. So I was able to work this system and get to a, a, a Sam's Club and get my like display unit of blow pops. Just one. I thought maybe I'd get two, but I knew how long the experiment was running, how many we had to run through. It was like one a day for everyone. It was just like 20 or so in the class. Things were just terribly wrong. It's the worst sort of example of what can happen in this, this like fair trade, free trade that's not at all. But it's like making this point of U.S. dollars where it's a legal tender, payable for all debts, public and private, without the control of the word legal in the right place. So it could be paid criminally or for crime or as charges against crime. So I was the first one, the hall monitor, and I knew it would be this because I seen it on TV. That's why we didn't have them. Started coming at corruptly. I was the fastest walker. I was a speed walker and had the rights. I was a walker in terms of like my group, like the, um, the the brightest birds or the prettiest birds or whatever in reading groups. I was a walker. I walked to class and walked home and walked around society freely. Immediately. Immediately upon this implementation of this, this 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 theoretical system, I got tickets from this hall monitor that was fake. The first experiment, the first experience was he, he thought he had had the right to hold me up because so I didn't have a hall pass and I was in the hallway. There's no need by any hall pass system, so he tried to ticket me for speed walking. Speed walking was allowed, and I wasn't even at my speed walking rate. I was still fairly walking. He tried to call it running, like running was the takeable offense. So here we are. I'm trying to control this. I know nothing's going to control this. It's just an experiment. I'm calm. I figure he's going to try to take all my money at least this way. I, I think he's going to try to just write me all the tickets in his ticket book. Every chance he has to write a ticket. The teacher's totally failed again. These aren't the rules. But we have the system like the teacher's the judge. I'm going to take the ticket to the teacher at payday. Go to court this way. Or, 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 or um, 
our, our negotiations. Try to handle it. I warned all the other students. It's everything we said. I explained these conditions. They already knew. It's like they're just going to take all their money. They're already not going to get their candy, basically. Why are we even doing this? What lesson is this? We made our agreements. I had the money to make it through the first day. When we had to pay, I had to pay the ticket. Like, I figure I'm going to have to pay this ticket no matter what, even though it's not an appropriate ticket. There's, there's no communicating with, the, with these people that aren't even really in class here. They're not students here. They're not allowed in class here. I'm going to make it through this one. It's probably not going to be too, too tough. I think I held off. Like, I have no bills. I, I, have nothing, I have nothing to use my money for except this fight with the tickets. I, I sacrificed myself the way we knew I would. I got the first ticket. We knew they were going to come at all of us with the tickets. You know, this is the point. Everybody has to give me all the money they can give me every time. I don't know what, you have, what money you have. We're going to have to have our, our community discussions so we can get this money moving. So everybody, and then there's, there's like getting out in the Monopoly game, something like if you don't have the money to get through payday, you don't get money the next, at the end of payday for your next round. You're sort of out of our, our experiment in our game. So this just this next guarantee. You're not going to get your food here. You're not going to get your candy. But we had that under control. I started bringing blow pops for everybody every day. At the point we had to have the, the economy start. So we had to learn what, what was going on here and how they were going to do this to us in our lives. Where well, we already knew. We, we were to do so much money in life. Real, real deal currency money for the work we are doing in school and class. We couldn't have. There's no fooling us. I, I, I know I was just trying to prove to them at this point, I'm going to have to handle all the money and run my systems of monopoly so we can make it through this and not, just, and not end up on detentions or, you know, it's starting to turn out to be, you know, the, the time doing this experiment turns into detention time. So we didn't have detentions. It's like you're going to have to spend the whole time through these lessons with your head down on the desk if you got out. I, I had I, I I I was preparing to go with, to the negotiations with the, the fake judge teacher to try to figure out how much money could be taken from our um, community this way. C could they really just write false tickets and take all of everybody's money? Was there some sort of like collective ticket? Maybe one person could invoke or the bad hall monitor. I mean, I think there's that one. Oh my God! Can the hall monitor trigger a ticket that takes all of our money? The rest of the sequence of this experiment of lessons we have to spend, their head down on our desk, because, like, that's what he deserves, always here. So as a teacher, she just needs to get out. You should take her out to the gallows and give her the guillotine treatment you talk about. So I went. I tried to negotiate. I was prepared to just give and pay. I tried to handle it. I recited the rules. I had the rules recited. I had a break. So that's not what this is and stuff. Not go further. Not make it worse. Pay up. Prepare for the next one. I did well at getting no further tickets. But it's turned into this series of making it impossible to survive this economy like this was a lesson. I managed to bring in some currency over the experiment. So, because some of the people, the way I was getting them the candy, were getting me some currency back for it. So I managed to go ahead and bring in enough currency for my real work in the marketplace to pay for the next display case ball pops from what I brought in from the first case. It's a great success. I mean, I, I enjoy appropriate economics. It was totally ba basically donation based. They had their honor. If they have a nickel, give me they'll give me a nickel. Almost no matter what, and by the time, sort of like trading a nickel for the blow pop, they almost have to. You know, it's one of the rates I was talking about. They'd never been in the economy. They knew it was basically supposed to be a nickel, a blow pop. I'd sort of seen it. They also knew with this teacher wanting a dollar a blow pop, there was this, there was this problem, like there was gonna, it was going to be a dollar a blow pop. 
But we, we had sort of known, although we hadn't all, any of us exactly seen like four blow pops for a dollar. They, like they wanted the biggest coin that wasn't a dollar. It was going to be a quarter of a blow pop, which I had sort of seen. They hadn't. They had never even had a quarter. Anyway, it turned into, you know, just every time they got money, all the money came to me. The teacher didn't understand the system. I didn't teach anybody the system so I could understand it to win. Because I, I had Monopoly memorized. Like I had memorized the instructions. I can write the instructions. I am the bank. I know how to just, from, from memory, recite the Monopoly instructions, including having to start from nothing but a recitation to rebuild the whole game of Monopoly, having paper and pencil, like a bank has to usually. So I knew where the cap was for the bank. I knew the max amount of currency. We all knew the teacher was going to cheat. We basically had the proof, like she had the non-monopoly money. That was this huge problem in these things. I just kept my mouth shut. I didn't have to say much, because we all knew she was going to bring in other money. I was running my monopoly system about putting money under the board. Being the bank, so, so only I could keep count, basically. After, after maybe having started, made sure everything was square with everyone. Sort of telling them this. I think this is where we started getting the term under the table. And I might have been using under the board. Breaking it to like under the bar. That's what was going on. So I was able to um, actually put the entire set of the Monopoly money in our experiment under the board, so to speak. So all the money in the economy managed to flow to me. I managed to keep it all. I managed to hide it all in the special bank way. Then we all managed to just, just play the teacher's game with the play money. Not even the experiment. Things, that, things just went terribly wrong. Like any, any product she moved, which she basically controlled the blow pops, it's the worst product ever that was never allowed to move in an economy. All the worst sort of stuff everyone was worried about with this candy. Like everything we've ever been scared of on Halloween, getting a candy like this, happened to us. Well, I managed to do so well with my donations, I picked it up to this four-pack of blow pop systems. I was able to give everybody, every day, four blow pops. Although most of them didn't need this after they got that many. There's some of the sequences. So finally, we're basically at the last day, the experiment. The teacher, by whatever means, just decided it takes all the money in the economy to make it through to the next payday that won't occur. It's just everybody passed. The way it's going to be impossible. She's going to take all the money in. Nobody's going to get any money back. Nobody's going to have money. At the point we're supposed to have succeeded at the lesson. So she's going to take it all. Before we even get to have it done right. Like we paid right. Like she's just going to take it. It's not even going to count as paying it. So I blow this up. Like they all think she's going to understand. I have the money under the board hidden. Just keep raising the number. So we all lose. But she can't count right. She doesn't know how much play money's gone out. We managed to set this with the right play money. Like, the, the penny coin is a dollar. The nickel coin is five. The quarter coin is $25. The first bill is a hundred. Ten's a thousand. And the hundred is a ten thousand dollar bill. Teacher can't count this. Students haven't even tried to count this. I'm the only one working the currency. Teacher keeps running the number up and running the number up. It's no understanding. I forget. I, did we get to a million? It's supposed to be a monopoly. It's spare like 10,000 or something. I just, I know that's like us gambling. I get the teacher to set the number. Like we're, we're all going to work together and have her just finally uh, get the big cash grab. Have it ended there. So you can prove if we've won or not. So all said and done. So I can just have one more currency unit left. So at least you succeed at this. I just push, you know, I push the whole pile over. Here it is. It's at least that much. Count it. System breaks. Class is almost done for. She's counted in piles. What the, 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 the number was she wanted. I might have even worked it. Like they, kept, they kept breaking her down and breaking her down. Like the pile is the maximum amount of currency allowed in the system over and over. Like her mind's gonna break it like ten piles or something. And there's like a thousand times at least as much. 
currency in the, in the play money as they're supposed to be. She breaks. She thinks she's got us. They remind her there's other currency in the system. She doesn't even know the number anymore. Think we're going to lose? It's not much. The, the people have followed along like they counted up their, their ticket costs. I had to handle every ticket. I took every ticket to court for them. I did all the negotiations with those. So that's, that, was the, that, was the, that was the duty with the currency moving, mo- movings. So it was basically like the, finally this last number was basically the maximum amount the tickets could ever take from us in one round. It was basically like one, one round of pay of everyone. Like everyone's 200. I had it all though. So how much do you have? All of it. We won. We proved all our points. I don't really know where things went from there. That was the last time I was appropriately respected in society. I got to be the leader. People followed. I. And despite our long suffering and and the evil and the torture, we had maximum success. The perfect nature. I wish to have this again. I'm almost sure this has never, ever been anywhere near an experience I've had in the USA. So... I beseech you, O great communist leader who can answer my hails to Satan. Like I can ring hells bells and then you can have Satan coming to you. Hells bells. I beseech you. President Vladimir Putin have Satan get you Satan get me all of them Satan get you too Satan too hell's bells see you start the strike sequence and this suffering here it is rank rife rancid festering human suffering just fighting for fighting's sake, no end in sight, everything being done to have every fight at all times, as it seems, probably has always been the case, everyone here is demented, and always has been, with it almost surely being the case, breaking quarantine causes dementia. Well, it's probably the case being in quarantine too long causes dementia. Well, it's also probably the case to even want to break quarantine is being demented while well, there seems to be isolated cases. After being demented out of quarantine, getting back to quarantine or whatever, one can heal from the dementia. If you see it, you start the strike sequence. Sarmac control this. I hail Satan. If Satan get you, if Satan get me, bring Satan. Send the Satan, send Satan, Satan too. Please, please, end it.